Hello, everyone. Bunny Operator here. Welcome back to the channel. This is episode two of Inside the Industry, and I have uh, my friend, and really, really an honor to have him here. He's uh, the venerable Roger Wing of Four Controls Design. He's well known in the industry for making innovative parts, and uh, he's very technical. If you go on the Four Controls page and read product descriptions, it's it's uh, literally, literally research assignments on their own, and you can find yourself lost uh, hours reading the product descriptions. But without further ado, the venerable Roger Wang, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us about the company. Oh, hey Jesse, yeah, hey everybody. Yes, uh, Roger Wang um, of uh, Four Controls Design. Um, we. Um, um, st four controls started in 2015 um, after I left um, Battle Rooms, and um, and and we ran it as a um, as a hobby uh, because we're passionate about it um, up until 2020, um, and then um, um, so it, recent events with the virus and the election um, had um, propelled us to a point where we could do it full-time and so, so we have been and so that also allowed us to move to Texas which we did um, back in December but my background um, is a uh, an IT systems engineer and uh, I still retain the skills but I use it up now for our own business and not not doing this for anybody else now but um, you know um, I think um, if you look at our a lot of our products um, a lot of it kind of makes sense I mean it's also it, it's um, it has a lot to do with my training, former training as an IT uh, system engineer in that um, things have to work. We don't care really how they look. Um, we're not going to add flowers to a layer three switch because it looks good. It doesn't help it. It has to work. It has to be configured properly. So, so that drives, uh, so my logical and um, um, critical thinking um, get carried into four controls as well. And um, it's, so, in four controls, we you know I'm doing the same thing as I did at um, at Battle Rooms, um, ex except now we have a full control of our direction, um, and um, so we um, completely focus on function, um, and um, function follows form follows function, and function over form. That's always been out for better lack of better words, a design language, um, and so happens that these forms usually can look very good, but um, I can show you looks are always the last thing we'll, we'll work on. And, um, and uh, there are a byproduct of our, de our, our design philosophy. But yeah, so yeah, so um, being in Texas for four and a half, five, half months and so happy to call myself a Texan. Mm -hmm. We're very happy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's interesting because I, I, I want to uh, let folks know that uh, we are doing the webinars now because, well, distance, of course, the travel restrictions, so we can't do this in person, unfortunately. But I, uh, I am a Ford Controls vendor, and you know, I've, I've gotten the pleasure to know Roger for a long time. That's why I thought it'd be a great addition to bring um, him on to this video series. And realistically, it's just because the 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 mindset, uh, Roger, your mindset is it's uh, pretty meticulous when it comes to QC and components. And I wholeheartedly trust your components on my builds. In fact, uh, you know, a lot of the components that we get in as dealers ends up on employee rifles. <laughs> and just because we, uh, we, we truly do respect your work and really the community that you've developed itself. So, you know, th that being said, it's like your pathway towards this industry itself, like that's uh Let's start off with with your background and stuff like your your personal history coming into the world of firearms. Why don't we start with that? Yeah. So yeah. So as a firearms collector enthusiast, um, you know, I would take classes, take courses with various instructors, and um, back in late twenty tens or late two thousands, um, we you know decided to choose. Hey, why don't we? Make a comp create a company to, to make things that nobody else wanted to make. Um, and then you find this on quite a few of them because a lot of times you pick up a, a something, anything, and you're like, oh, well, why is it made this way? How come nobody makes it the way I really want it to work? And if you find a lot of that in, in every aspect of your life, right? So um, I was just uh, kind of making fun um, of my wife uh, that she put the egg carton opening on the left side and everybody <laughs> went in there. 
So I'm like, oh, well, why is, you know, for me, I have to use my offhand to do that. So yeah, it's, it's, it's something like that. So yeah, so, so Battle Arms got started, you know, doing that. So, and so we um, made a couple of things that were p- pretty popular. And so in 2014, it was time to, to move on. Um, so yeah, I, I have been an IT, I've been IT for 20 some years. Um, you know, it's, um, it's a rewarding business, but uh, um, it has done a lot for me. And, you know, the, the, the training, the actual experience doing of doing that um, has helped shape um, four controls in, in many different ways. Um, and to the, the functional part of it, um, and to the, 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 um, the lack of emphasis on looks, I, I just don't care. Um, <laughs> I understand that, um, you know, things looks do matter. And so we don't go out of our way to make things look ugly for sure. Because nobody <laughs> will buy it. Uh, that's just, you know, I, I know just because I have a logical mind doesn't mean I don't, I can't understand the emotional side of things as well. Right. I'm, I'm a human being. I'm not a robot. <laughs> so, so, um, so, um, so, th- so that's in along, along, along the way, we, I discover things that I never knew before, but because of my collection of firearms, um, Russian, German, American, and, um, and, and because I'm a history buff, I, I study them. I studied the guns and, uh, and you, everything you look at, like, okay, well, this is interesting. Why do you do it this way? Oh, I see. You know, for instance, um, if you look at the, the um, World War II up until the 70s and 80s, most European guns have a heel magazine release, right? Mm-hmm. Well, as American, you look at that, like, this is stupid. Why do they have it like that? But they have their reasons. <laughs> their reasons are not our reasons. And our reasons don't always make sense to them. So, you know, so instead of making a, 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 a summary, a quick judgment against anything that I don't, I don't understand, I learned to appreciate what they offer. Because uh, I, you know, I've been doing this for a while. Sorry. Um, lots of um, planes here. So um, I, I real, I, I, you know, the, the one thing I learned is to keep an open mind on things I don't understand instead of criticizing it, which I, I criticize everything just because, you know, a, a critical mind, this is the, the downside of it. You look at everything like, well, I don't like it. Well, why? There's a reason for it. But instead of making a summary judgment on, on why you don't like it, you, you, I learned to look at what they offer versus why they don't. Um, so, um, but this is also part of my training in IT um, in that, so, well, you have to quickly identify what doesn't work and what works and you keep it. What doesn't work, you get rid of it. Um, and aesthetics, as important as they are to a lot of people, are never part of this equation. Um, so that's why they're always the last part we work on. And that's the fun part because it's easy. It's easy for me anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah, so four controls. Yeah, so um, it's, it, I, I find myself, I find this to be a niche. Um, I, you know, ergonomics. Um, you know, a lot, it's, um, it's, it just seems to me that um, a lot of things in life, you can, you can pick up anything. And you wonder why didn't it take it to hundred percent? Is it because they can't imagine it? I mean, that's as far as certain imagination goes, or they just say that's good enough. People will buy them anyways. And I, I, I suspect it's a little bit of both. But for us, we spend a lot of time on product development. Um, we start with an idea, we, we keep refining it. And then when it's done, we actually try to go back and try to make it simple um, because it's, it's a kind of a paradox that um, you know, simple things are not simple to make. They actually cost a lot of time, a lot of money to make simple. Um, any intelligent fool can make something bigger and more complicated. It's just, it takes a lot of effort to do just the opposite. But uh, so, yeah, so our niche is, and our thing is simplicity. Um, and so throughout history, you can find that, uh, you know, I mean, like at you can look at Germans, they like complicated things. And I, that's still true to this day for the most part. Look at their cars, like, why is it so complicated to make? You, know, to, <laughs> you, know, you got to remove the engine. I mean, it's just dumb, right? But uh, so they don't think the way we do. But uh, there's something to be learned from the way they, they, they do things. Um, yeah, so, um, so what we do is we find things that people take for granted. Um, and so we try to make it better. To, in a way that you want machine to work for you, not you working for the machine, because it, well, who's in charge here? The machine's not in charge, and we are. 
No, right, right. Totally, totally understand that. And so, so hitting back on your point where, where you, you being a history buff, especially for firearms related, I, I totally do understand with the, understand that aspect. But I mean, simply, you have to understand how things work or why things were designed the way they do in order to improve upon uh, future designs. So I, I totally get that. It's that analytical and very meticulous mindset of, of, uh, of your personality, actually. <laughs> I've learned that from working with you uh, over uh, the last year or so. I believe that's how long I've been a vendor for you. Yeah. And, you know, again, I'm very, very, very fortunate and very grateful for being uh, given the opportunity to be one of your vendors there. Now, that that being said, now I, I know that you're you're very humble and you don't like to talk about yourself so much, Roger. But I'm sure people are wondering um, about your your upbringing and you know how you came to to be where you are. How how Roger Wayne came to be, not necessarily <laughs> for controls. <laughs> All right, so on that, we'll, we'll do it move on. You know, I, I don't like the sound of my voice. Talk about humble. I'm not sure that's being humble, but uh, <laughs> so yeah, so um. Uh, I came to the States in 84, uh, mm-hmm. went to school here, and, uh, um, and um, I, you know, pay my dues working for other people and um, as, as IT and started my own business and then and, um, started battle rounds with my former partner in 2009. Um, so, um, and the four controls in 2014. So, um, it, you know, it's... You know, my wife would disagree. I would just talking to her. I mean, you know, it's I I I it, 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 I think you know the, 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 the Chinese have a lot of proverbs. I think one of them is something like the the bottle that makes that's half full makes the most noise, right? If if you think, I mean, we just don't have to. You if you know what you know, and you don't you know what you don't know. There's no reason to say I, I'm out stops the best. I don't know that. I like to th- think that we make the best what we can, but that decision, that call is for the customer to make. And I would right. prefer for them to come to that conclusion. Um, and my personality of being critical and, and very analytical, you know, it, it would drive people crazy. As my wife, she can tell you, to, you know, <laughs> because I look at everything and criticize it, right? Um, not so much in a good way, but I just point things out. Like, for instance, you watch TV and say, you watch. Uh, um, any gun movie, you know, with action, like, oh, they, they, they did that wrong. You know, back in the, you know, back in 2000 or back in 1980, there was no summer stocks, right? So I would point that, that kind of stuff out. Um, but you know, that's just part of, of, um, of paying attention um, to, to everything. Um, but, you know, um, I'm, a, I'm an American citizen. I'm, a, I'm Chinese. Um, well, you know, my parents were, came from China. They went to Taiwan, and I was born there. And they went to Korea. And from there, I came to the States in '84 to, uh, to to go to school. So um, I still have an accent. Um, probably will stay with me forever. And that's just how it is. Can't change that. But, uh, yeah. So that's um, yeah. Um, my IT. Well, you know, um, I was in IT for 20, 25 years. And uh, I'm happy to not be doing that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the firearm business could be very uh, rewarding. Um, you know, it's uh, uh, I because I'm so used to doing this as, as as a hobby. You know, as a hobby, you don't make money doing doing things <laughs> because you spend a lot of money doing it. And right. so get in developments, because a lot of things we do is because I want it because nobody else makes it. Um, I'm like, well, why don't people make it? It's because you know, so. You know, I like to identify with Apple quite a bit in that a lot of times they invent or, or they come up with a demand that nobody even knew they had. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's true with a lot of our products, um, like the low drive forward assist. Um, I complained about it for years, but nobody would make one. I forget, I to make one myself. <laughs> and, and the people would say, oh, so it's, a, it's a solution, it's a social problem. I'm like, no, you know, if you're able-bodied, a wheelchair is a solution, it's a social problem, but it's, but, it's, but it's not made for you. Right. right. Even to this day, um, you know, people say that about product. Oh, that never happened to me. Oh, okay. But it happens to 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 to, to law enforcement. It happens to troops. If it never happens to you, great. Don't buy it. <laughs> uh, it's not made for you. You know, there's not one solution that fits all. It, that's just how it is. It's like you know, making a car seat that's not adjustable. Uh, nobody will buy that because it's not made for you. You want it. You want it your way. But. Uh, um, yeah, I, I come across that a lot, and so I just learned to kind of ignore it. But uh, anyway, kind of veering off topic here a little bit. 
Yeah, uh, I, I definitely do. Uh, using your your products, too, or at least my introduction to port controls, I do see the the subtle benefits to a lot of the parts. Like definitely, especially the the uh, LDFA and the LSFA, the the newer uh, low snag with the partnership with uh, Jim Hodge, and that uh, those products are immensely huge, useful when you are trying to charge from the right side. <laughs> And people don't understand that, right? Especially your uh, URF billet one, the billet uppers themselves, that with that little channel, and they're very subtle, but they do make a difference if you are using it the way that uh, they were designed for, right? And you know, I, I found uh, especially if you don't like, uh, if you haven't maintained your your nails for a little bit or so, then you just get caught right on that port assist as you're dragging through, and it sucks, right? Because now you have a, a minor injury, but that minor injury builds up. And adds to uh, adds to uh, mental fatigue over time. So they certainly are useful. And I, I think that the the firearms industry itself, because you know we're not immune to the uh, the thought processes that any other industry is is uh, has in sense where where people just question things like you alluded to earlier. They 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 just uh, give a general general uh, broad idea or thought process behind it, but they don't truly try to understand why that item was designed. And if they don't do that, then how can they possibly understand the benefits? So I'm, I'm right there with you on that. You know, I, 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 I would say that no company should be unsellable. Every right. company, sh- we should be able to criticize and, and, and suggest. And, you know, so we're not above that. Um, you know, not everything we do is, I mean, I like to think everything we do, we have done well, um, but things that we haven't done well, you, 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 you don't see it because they got shelved. And I know for every part of that mm-hmm. you see, we have about three or four that never made it out there because they're, you know, every time we come up with a new, with a, with a new idea, there's just two, two questions. One, how come nobody made it? Um, has nobody thought of it? Number two, it's because just stupid. Um, it's just, sometimes it's just because stupid, right? Um, and, and but also, you know, everything, it, you know, everything you do, there's a consequence somewhere. And this is the part about paying attention, right? So paying attention, you know, attention to detail is such a cliche. You know, people, do people really understand what that means? I mean, I even pay attention to that cliche because I know what it entails. You know, you know if you have a piece of, I don't know, it, it, that has like, you know, say trigger guard, you, you engrave it, you, you inlet it with gold and silver is a work of art. It does not do a thing better. So right. you can say that you pay attention to detail. You unfortunately, you 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 it's a wrong focus. It's it's, it's pay, you paid it to the, into the wrong part, of, um, as opposed to something that's just there. It works when you need it to. When it doesn't, you, it's out it's out of the way. It's something you brought up on the LDFA. I mean, you know, attention to to detail in this case is just like that. I mean, look at look at things around you. I mean, look at us. Yeah, we don't have bunny ears, right? If bunny ears are big for rabbits for a reason, we don't have them. Because hearings is now not, not our strong suit, so things that are important to us. They are built up more. Things are not as important to us. They recede. They disappear sometimes. Like our tail, for instance, we don't use it, so it went, it went away. Things that we use a lot of that are very well developed. Our hands very well developed, right? You look at the dog's paw, not so much, right? So it's 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 focus on things that matter. It playing to your strength. Okay. Um, and, and how does that even come into guns? Well, because you are human, you are holding up a piece of metal. It's not just a stick. It has to work for you the way you want it to. Um, and, and, and if it's too big somewhere, it doesn't work so well. If it's too small, it also doesn't work so well. But if whatever you do, there, there's a consequence somewhere. You make something too big, it doesn't work with something else because it's too big, right? So um, unintended, consequ- unintended consequences is just one of them. Right. But, you know, the, 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 the idea, you know, I would say Nice Armament, for instance. Um, I mean, they are my fa- one of my favorite companies. The other one being Altor. And then there is uh, Sons Liberty, Sionix, and, you know, uh, Reptilia. All these folks, what they have in common is there's attention to detail and, and correctly focused at that because they pay attention to detail where it matters. So my, one of my favorite saying is that attention to, to detail matters in its application. Um, you could you could engrave you could put silver lining you could you could um, you could have intricate um, engraving on a barrel it doesn't do anything different it doesn't mm-hmm. do anything better uh, but if you but if you pay attention to what it actually does for instance a Jim Hodge's barrel 
You, you never see that. When you get a, a harsh defense barrel, it comes in a plastic bag, not even marked harsh defense. It's just a vent on it. But my God, that barrel is marvelous, mm -hmm. right? So I'd rather have that than a barrel that's completely dressed up, that sells for more or less, don't care. It just doesn't work very well as well. Um, and so, you know, so my, our attention to focus, uh, attention to detail and focus on things that matter, almost leave something behind that is um, looks, I just don't care. And people complain about uh, tool marks within, inside the carrier board. I'm like, um, you know, why does it even come up? <laughs> With or without it, it doesn't do anything better, right? So, 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 then, so then the question is, well, how can you say you pay attention to, to detail, but you don't pay attention to that? The answer is <laughs> we can't pay attention to detail to everything. Some things just don't matter. So we don't even look at it. So, you know, when I brought this up to uh, Josh at Sonic saying, he's like, what? Never heard of that. And in, in a world of the same mindset, like, well, why should we even spend more money or time doing something that has zero consequence? But, you know, but, you know, basically the thing is, is, is when you pay Ferrari money, you want Ferrari, right? You don't want it pre-scratched, even though you, you couldn't scratch it when you use it. <laughs> so people have expectations. I, I get that. Um, you know, it's, it frustrates me sometimes. Oh, this is not, uh, um, this is my scratch on it. I'm like, you do realize when you use it, you're going to get scratched on it, right? Right. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it's no problem. It's, you know, our stuff is expensive. Um, you know, it's made in America in small volume and um, we'll build a machine, pretty much everything. And that costs a lot of money. Yep. Um, people have uh, high expectations with the higher price tag. So I get that. Um, you know, and not to say, not to mention, we don't have a very well good way of saying, you know, if you care about looks, don't buy from us. I, I don't, I, we don't, we don't, we don't uh, discriminate, you know, whether you like looks or function, we sell to, you know, it's, uh, we sell to everybody. But um, yeah. No, you're, you're absolutely correct. I, I can't tell you how many uh, customers or folks walk into my shop and complain that their upper receiver has been scratched by their charging handle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's such a common wear area too. Or, or they're, they're complaining that uh, the install of the hand guards uh, have scratched the barrel or vice versa. I'm like, it's the inside of the hand guard. It's the outer portion of the barrel that you're never going to see. It's covered anyways. <laughs> right. So, so I think that there's a fundamental divide between, uh, you know, in, in our mission and so this is our messaging as well. And I, I and we, and I, I think our messaging has been pretty good in that we make tools. Mm -hmm. Tools get used. Right. Tools get scratched. Tools get damaged. And that's what tools do. And you should expect that to happen. Um, but because it so happens that our products tend to look nice, the way that it's a sports car that can, that's capable of going 200 miles an hour, you look at the lot, that looks really pretty cool. Guess what? They didn't do that for looks. It was there for a reason, right? I also think of jets, right? Um, do they put like, like, like you know, um, bells and whistles on, on, on outside of jets? No, there's no room for it. And but if whatever you do there, it's going to, it's going to detrimental to it. So they don't have time. They don't have room for it. That's what ours. That's what ours is. But you know, purpose-driven objects can look very good. And so this attracts folks that buy them for looks. No problem. You know, again, we love all of our customers. We don't, we don't uh, discriminate. Um, it's just I, I do hope that people do use it because that's what we, you know, because, you know, our mission from the, from the very beginning is to make a difference to people that use their firearms as tools. Mm -hmm. And so the parts we make are tools themselves. They get used, they get abused and, you know, do whatever you want with it. They, they will survive it. Um, what we don't want people to do is buy them and then put them in a glass case because that's, we're not, you know, banally, we don't make you know, $50,000 shotguns for you to look at. <laughs> we make things for you to use right. for the defense of your life, for the, for the life of the loved ones. Um, and so, so we don't care about looks. And people are oh, tool marks. Uh, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> can't do anything about that. <laughs> you know, machines. You know, if we, yeah. Anyway, it's yeah. It, that's um, it's one of my pet peeves. Um, and uh, and it's been anyway. You know, so our messaging has always been, um, yeah. We want to make a difference, right? It's to people that use their guns, your firearms as tools, and this includes people like you and me, uh, law enforcement, military. Um, but it's, uh, it's never about um, you know, making money, really. Mm -hmm. right? 
we were rented for we rent for control so long as a hobby, so we're still operating that way. Mm-hmm. And that to us, money, profits, recognition, whatever, they're all nice things. Okay? I don't hate them. I like them, but it's not our, that's, they don't drive our direction. They're not our compass. Our compass has always been the same from 2014. If hell, you know, even from 2010, when I was about to it's always been the same. You know, I'm, I'm very consistent. It's, it's, it doesn't change. It's, well, I want to give back to the community, be a part of the community, um, and make a difference to people. Um, especially the ones that put their lives on the line for us every single day. They right. don't get enough things. And so if we can make their lives easier, if we can make them even more efficient than they already are by changing a couple of things, by making something work better so that they don't know how to struggle um, with, with their guns when they need it most, um, then I, th- I think that we have made the difference. Um, and so we're, tiny, we're a tiny shot. We're very small. Um, I, I don't want to think that uh, we are big enough to even make enough of difference. Uh, but, you know, to the people that we sell to, mm-hmm. I like to think that we have made a difference for them. Um, as, far, as far as driving direction, driving the industry in one way or another, I, I don't think we're big enough for that. Um, and really, that's not our goal. Um, well, it would be nice if folks pay more attention to quality, to things that actually matter, not things that make money. Uh, mm-hmm. Because I can... <laughs> make I can I could we could do red on one of the components and sell a whole bunch of them. Okay? I just refuse to do it because it, it doesn't do anything better, and and um, and it's just a bad optics for us as well. Because right. you can't say that you want to make a difference, but you also do things exclusively to make a profit. And and uh, I think companies that do that, you can see them. You know, you, you see why to do it. So, mm-hmm. Again, I don't hate money. Business exists to make a profit. There's nothing wrong with making a profit. It's just when you do this at the expense of your customer's well-being, at, at the expense of their efficiency, then I, 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 I can't get behind that. Yeah, there, there's definitely a lot of uh, those companies out there. <laughs> you know, I mean, so, sometimes the, the products that are released out there, I really question, like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's definitely, definitely that out there. Um, you know, I, you mentioned uh, Josh from Sinex, uh previously. Too, so I, I am a dealer for them, too. And it's I've had a good probably hour to lo- hour long conversations with him um, on the phone regarding the, the products that we want to bring. And he is a great guy. And he's probably the same meticulous mentality that you have, honestly. And, you know, by far, by far the, uh, the circle of, of manufacturers and, and companies around four controls is they, they are definitely up there, up there in, in, in quality. And as far as like meticulous mentalities, as far as, uh, uh, giving back to the consumer base versus profit. And I don't, I don't think people realize this, but you know, and I have this, fortunately for me, I have this, uh, the insight information with you being a dealer that I don't think people understand how low margin a lot of these parts are. And simply it's out there for the betterment of the community or for the end user and the shooters. And, you know, and, and people still complain. They're like, well, I don't understand why this costs so much. Well, like, you know, going back to the whole CNC, things cost money. Things cost more money when you make them in America, you know, and it, it, I'm not sure how many people know, but a lot of your products are made by other partners within the industry. Like these same uh, companies that, that I am a vendor for. And sometimes, um, you know, they're, they're basically friends of the industry themselves. And you, it seems like you seek out the, 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 the vendors that you know, for sure have that same mentality and that high quality QC and use them to make your products for you, but to your specifications. I, I think that's an incredible plan, really. You know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a plan thing. I didn't, I didn't write down papers. Well, like this company, I want, mm-hmm. I want, I want to run out the hotel. <laughs> and, you know, you remember when we were small and we're still small, uh, when we were lesser known, uh, and so, you know, we still, a lot of people still don't know us. Um, that's fine. You know, we are known in some circles and that's good enough for me. Um, you know, it's because it's just not an objective to be household name. Because right. again, if you, I mean, some of the, very good companies, um, you know, South Liberty Gun Works. If you go to some gun shop, you say, I want to look for South Liberty. Huh? What's that? Right. Or Jim Hodge, right? Hodge Defense. Never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, you know, so the name, well, it doesn't matter. I mean, right. So, you know, it's just over the years, we, I have developed respect for, for a lot of folks we, we, that we do with, that we 
to work with now, that wasn't always the plan. Um, it's just, um, you know, uh, you know like-minded people tend to hang out more. Right, right. So, for instance, I, will, I won't hang out with someone that uses drugs a lot because I'm, I, I just, I, you know, or, or liberal for that matter. I just, we just can't, you know, with different minds, we're going to be right. fighting all the time. So, so these folks, and we share a common vision, common mission in that, um, you know, the company that, that we work with, even though I don't say, well, so-and-so doesn't like, doesn't do this, so, so we're not going to do business with them. I mean, we would, we would never see everything eye to eye. Um, how Jim Hodge and I disagree on something sometimes. <laughs> He's not me. We're not him. We're not twins. We're not going to you know, agree on everything all the time. So, so going back to place to your strength, what is he very good at? What are we very good at? So our collaboration is combining both of our strengths into that collaboration. And, um, and people we, we work with, like Sionix, um, a CMT, Cross Machine Tools, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, um, Sionix, um, Century Arms, um, and uh, great people. Oh, well, and our yeah. machines and Dave Carter, right. um, and also with Dave Warner at um, Next Level. Yeah, if you were if they were dishonest at any point in time, I mean, they, you, I mean, that would be, be in the end of it. So you know, the fact that uh, that we're still working with them, and and, and not with not with some shops. Well, yeah, because they're because they're competent, they're they're, they're honest, and and we. But mostly, we share. It, there's always something common, right? So sometimes it's a common enemy. In this case, it's not a common enemy, but you know, in, in, there's common goals. Um, so with people with common goals tend to stick together mm-hmm. um, with common shared values. Um, so you know, uh, I wouldn't be doing collaboration with companies. Not going to name names, but you know, I don't collab- do collaboration with everybody. Um, but right. people that we do a, do a lot of work with us because well, we keep finding ourselves. Well, back to the same spot. Hey, let's do this together. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds good. Um, so, if you know, for instance, if you if you had a company that does nothing but anodized blue, white, red, whatever, in, in part that should be that should be steel. No, and, uh, first of all, you wouldn't be calling us, right? But but, but yeah, but yeah, that's um, yeah, it. Yeah, we you know, I I didn't chew. Well, I'm very proud of the company we keep. Um, it, you know, it doesn't necessarily say anything about us. It's just um, I am picky mm-hmm. about everything, and that includes people we work with. Right. Right. Uh, de- definitely. Definitely some of the best people in the um, industry that I have ever met are usually circle around four tools, or, or they certainly are aware of the company and, and the company surrounding uh, four controls themselves, like uh, partners like Centurion Arms, uh, Corey and Monty probably some of the other best people I've ever met or had the pleasure of working with. Uh, so, so for the folks who are, who were, who are unsure, uh, can you clarify what your position was at Battle Arms? Um, I was one of the, uh, the, 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 well, there were two of us. Um, and uh, we started in a home office. I, I don't want to see garage because we didn't have, I didn't have a garage. <laughs> Having a garage, that's like, you know, so uh, we just started, we just did, did it full time, uh, part time. Up until 2013, 14, and then he went full time, and I was still part time at the time. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's, I was there for four years, um, and yeah, you know, it's 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 a learning experience. Um, met met some folks that I'm still friends with today. So yeah, so that's that was my start. You know, my it's interesting. Yeah, it's um, it's part of my history. Um, it's, 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 it's behind me now, um, cause for control, for controls is, um, is a company I would have run. Well, I'm still, yeah, I, well, I'm running it. That's how it would be if I run, if I ran any other company. Mm-hmm. And so for, in part of the battle rooms was for time run, just like a higher run battle for controls now. I see. I see. Uh, so, so just, just to clarify there that you were one of the, um, the founders of that? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I wasn't aware of that. I, I, I assumed that uh, you were probably one of the, the product designers there or so, but I didn't know you were one of the founders. Okay. So this is why we do the interviews. <laughs> no, no, you know, I, I wasn't as thick of the, uh, of the safety and the pins development um, and the old levers. Hey, you know, you know, it's, I made mistakes. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, some mistakes I didn't repeat when we came out with our pins and um, with our safeties. Mm-hmm. And um, and um, and I'm not afraid to say I was the one making them, and um, I I don't blame anyone else because I was the one driving it. 
Um, but, but then, you know, I was new at the time and said, oh, you want this lab? Sure, no problem. We'll try it. So, yeah. So, I mean, just not to criticize battle rounds or their product in a way, because I was the one making that mistake that into products. But looking at it, if I can self-criticize, I would say, yeah, yeah, I, I wouldn't do that again. And, and we didn't do it again. Um, it's uh, at four controls. Like, like our safety now has like what a couple levers, and that's it. We don't give people mm-hmm. seven options because it's overwhelming. No, I'll definitely understand that. Well, you know, we, we certainly all evolve, and you know, our thing is, or at least my thing that I tell folks is, you know, we, we never stop learning, we never stop evolving, we always continuously get better, right? That's that's the way that life should be for for um, for everyone, <laughs> really. So I totally totally understand, I, and I don't think anybody would would fault any of the decisions that were made uh, from the past because they are the past. So it's totally understandable. Well, you well, because, you know, you learn by, by making mistakes. Um, right. If I hadn't done that, would the, our safety be what it is today? Um, probably not. Um, we still may be using screws. We may have. Now, so if I didn't make the mistake then, I'd be making them right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so right. a lot of our products and our, what we are, what, for how four controls is, um, it's based on having done things right and having right. done things that could have been done better. And that's all this, all this experience get rolled into well, what we are now. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that we are the best company because in, I, you know, uh, but I run it the way I see fit into them. You know, a lot of people don't agree with it. Um, people say, well, why don't you make this for such and such? I'm like, because I don't want to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and no interest. Um, you know, it, um, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I don't want to make everything under the sun, four clocks for the AR because, you know, I, and over the years, I've also learned to develop a huge amount of respect that I didn't have for TDP specs in the, the, the late 50s and also the A2 um, improvements back in the 80, early 80s. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, a lot of people change things I'm like, okay, what does it do? Just different, difference, different, difference, not better. Um you know, so like the, uh, the gas rings, mm-hmm. you know, I, you know, it, this is one good example of, of don't change things, but in a, you know, see, you know, there's one part of it that says, uh, a folk that said, well, if band broke, don't fix it. Right. I get that. Um, but on the other one side, well, if you don't, if you don't change anything, how do you, even get, how do you get better? Right. So in, right. in, in the way, so I'll bring up the gas rings because we were looking at it. Uh, um, Dave Shields or, you know, um, we were doing some brainstorming. Uh, he, um, former Marine, um, the uh, the uh, head instructor for head coach for the Marine shooting team, and we were just the, 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 the talking shop and you know coming up with stuff. He's like, oh, I have thought about making a better gas ring. I'm like, mm, okay, let's like think about that. So, um, so we actually had some design come up, but then I wasn't so sure about it. And so, so this design would be would be instead of three thin rings, it would be two. Uh, thicker rings, so they will last longer, right? I see. Remember what we said, what we said earlier about what anything you do has a consequence somewhere. Okay? So I wasn't really so sure about that because by doing this, you, you, you're getting rid of fully one third of fault tolerance and, and redundancy. Now, those are IT terms, but they actually don't necessarily need to stay in the IT realm. Fault tolerance is that it can, it can withstand something going, going wrong. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, redundancy means well, if something fails, something else is to, to take its place. Now, right. if you were um, in aviation, you heard about it before, like a lot of the, um, you know, jets and airplanes have fault tolerance and redundancy. If one fails, there's another one. That one fails, there's another one, right? There's multiple redundancies. So in the case of the gas ring, super simple design, three rings. When one fails, it will still run. When two fails, it will still run. And I can tell you because I had this um, LMT. Um, that's not one of my favorite companies, LMT. Awesome company, great people. Um, one of the rings, uh, one you know, the, 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 the enhanced bolts, when I was, you know, I'm like, because at the time you wouldn't even drop, do the, the, uh, the drop test anymore. You drop into the, the carrier, you just go straight in, right? Right. So, um, so finally I took it apart and my ring was completely missing. And the other ring looks like a sickle, right? So it, it fell apart. <laughs> so there was one ring left and it still ran. Okay. So, I look at them like, so like light bulb went off, like, oh, okay, why are we doing anything different here? This right. works. So, you know, the problem with the one piece ring is that it unravels and then it fails. I mean, and then you get your both stock in there, but, but mostly how does it do anything better? And the answer is it doesn't. And so by having one ring instead of three, you're getting rid of two thirds of your redundancy. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and that's never that's never a good thing. So, so this is one of the TDP designs um, that uh, that I like to bring you know up to the conversation. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm broke, so don't fix it. But at some time, we we'll try to fix it, or we we'll try to make it better, and then realize that there's nothing to fix. Okay. Like the uh, you know, I bring another example of the uh, uh, of the recoil spring. Right? Some people complain about going you know in the, in, the, in the stock, so they try to fix it. I mean, how is that even a problem to fix? Right. You say, no, you want uh, you want to fix the annoying color. That's the, the blue color in the sky. That's nothing wrong with it. Don't fix mm-hmm. it, right? But you know, no. On the other hand, on the other hand, um, you know, with some stuff will come up with people say, "Ah, oh, solutions to the problem. Why didn't bro don't fix it?" I mean, this was said about the fifty degree, or uh, rather, the short throw safety back mm-hmm. in two thousand ten. I mean, I heard this a lot from people in, in, that I call friends now, <laughs> but by then I was kind of like, "Yeah, hold on, you, you don't see that." You don't see the needs, and then so you made the summary judgment. So you don't need it because I'm broke. Okay, if that was the case, then why? I mean, human race really wouldn't have moved as far as we have because right. if you just stick with what works, you just stick with mud huts. Why well, I'm broke, right? Why 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 do anything better? You be stuck you you be stuck with muskets, but you know it's human nature to always want to do better, um, and also needs drive it right needs drive um, innovation, drive invention. And I don't come up with things, and I, I, I imagine that's the case with most people. They don't come up with things just to have. It's because it solves a specific problem. Um, you know, just because a lot of people, people don't see that, they like to, you know, they like to stay in, you know, stick with the old ways. Well, you can do that. Um, but don't say that there's no, there's, that's, there's, that, the, the, that the, the need doesn't exist. Right. For everyone else, it doesn't exist for you, but you don't speak for anyone else. Right. Right. Yeah. So uh, some of these uh, folks who don't understand firearms history don't realize that safe, some safeties were 180 degrees. <laughs> I mean, that's a full throw over. I th- what is it? The, um, the Daewoo's, I think some of them were full 180 degree swings. And then, <laughs> oh, wow. as, as I recall those, and then the improvement, um, was to make it a standard AR 90 degree, as far as I recall. But I, I'm pretty sure the modern variations of the debuts are correct now. But, you know, that's just one of the examples of, um, of, of, of designs evolving over time, right? So I, I, to- I certainly do understand that. You know, we, we uh, just because a design works doesn't mean it's immune to improvement. So I think, uh, but, you know, you have to look at it objectively versus just making things different just to be different. So just, just like you said, now, uh, you know, go ahead. Sorry. So, you know, the, 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 I, I have, you know, like I said um, earlier, I have come to ex, um, accept at least, and, and um, I'm willing to look at the reason why they do things differently. Mm-hmm. Some of them are just, just all right stupid. Okay? Um, <laughs> but some of them actually, have, they, there's a reason for it. Um, for instance, the, the deal with thing, I don't know exactly why it's 180 degrees. I suspect, and this would kind of make sense, in that if you have conscripts, Right. And instead of volunteer or volunteer army, where you say, I, I, I'm willing giving up my lifestyle, my life to do this thing for the country um, versus a conscript where you, you know, where you, it's, it's, it's mandatory. Mm-hmm. They're very different mentalities. Okay? I, or in say, um, you know, if you have just, so um, it could be very, uh, very well that, so, so that this has to be a conscious decision to go to get a fire. Um, and now, you know, it does make sense to us. And the, the European, the heel release thing, that, that's really weird out too. But I think that they have their reason as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and I learned this when I was reading one day that somebody actually was looking for a SIG P220 with a heel magazine release because he, he you know, he goes, he backpacks in Alaska. So he doesn't want a magazine button to, that's really close to his body that, that was released a magazine. Right, so they make sense to have a heel release because that way you really have to get your hand in there to get to get it out. So there's a reason for that. But without looking at the the um, the reasons why it was done differently, um, you, you know, you, you know, you don't, you may not be able to appreciate why it was done that way. Um, but you know, also the culture difference. There, there's a lot of that. So us Americans and um, and Europeans look at the class very differently. Mm-hmm. And so I think, uh, for instance, I one what I heard that in point, um, you know, um, in, in in Europe, the way they look at guns is, is not at all how we do it here. 
Um, so it, I think it would be a mistake to superimpose what works for us and onto someone else to say, well, why do you do it so it doesn't work? Well, it doesn't work for us. That's it. You know, it, 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 they have their reasons that, that may not apply to us. Mm-hmm. So, you know, keeping an open, an open mind is, is, you know, I, I, I wish people, want, most people can't do that. Most, most people are. But, uh, you know, if you come across, if you already know everything, um, we didn't do this way because uh, you should do this way. I'm like, well, why? <laughs> you know, we have done a lot of research and development into this. There's a reason why we don't do it. But you already know everything. You should know, how, you know, we should have done this, right? But, uh, yeah, you know, we, we do come across those every now and then. Um, but fortunately, most of our customers are, and my friends are, are you know, they're just really nice. They're willing to listen to, to, to the reason. And, and, um, and not let the emotion get in the way. The, the emotion will be, this doesn't work, it doesn't fit. Um, yeah, but there's a reason for why it doesn't work. What doesn't fit yours? Right. Right. Well, you know, uh, segueing from the friends of the industry itself and uh, the partners, you know, I, I knew that uh, a lot of the recent designs have come out or, or, or additional partnerships like the ones with uh, TNBC. And stuff. You want you want to talk about those products or anything in up and coming? Anything that you you yeah. can release to the world? <laughs> well, yeah, the, the the PCM was from TNBC. You know, I've known Vic uh, the coastal like, since two thousand two. I mean, we go way back. You know, you know, I haven't seen him for a while. You see, I think he moved to um, Nevada. But uh, I remember when Vic was uh, quitting his aerospace job. He started. He was starting out. You know, TNBC he wasn't really nervous. I told him, I don't worry about it. You know, he's, you know, you're a capable guy. You can do this. And by God, he has done a great job with TMVC. But so Augie, um, that I knew from from airfishing.com, mm-hmm. and uh, he, uh, you know, in, we've kept in touch every now and then. And so he went, you know, last September, he, he said, "Hey, want to do something about cable management?" I don't really, you know, I don't really think it's really required, but but some people do like it. I'm like, okay, let, let's take a look at it. So, um, so we started this this project, and Augie, I mean, he was in the army for a long time. So, and so he, what he brought to the table in terms of, I mean, for this product is actual experience. And also, he was he's been with, with TNPC for a while, so he's a user and he's in the industry. So, what he brings to the table, you don't just dis- dismiss because mm-hmm. it's your experience. It's not like some people. It's not like us talking, you know, like, oh, how about you do this? How about you do that? He actually knows what works and what doesn't work. Right, um, and uh, you know, a lot of people like to use um, zip cord, uh, zip ties. But well, the problem with zip ties, okay, it works. It's, it's, it's a few exper- uh, expedient thing. The problem with that is if, if you if you leave a sharp edge or corner somewhere, right? That's the problem. I just rotate it, right? They always rotate back and cut you. Okay, now this has happened. Um, so yeah, so we you know, so we started this and uh, and we got Dave at uh, Arsenal Machines to to make it. Um, it's yeah, it's, uh, it's it's done very well for us. Um, it's uh, it's um, it's function. You know, everything is function first. You know, the uh, looks that was easy. Um, looks way dimple them because that happens to match um, the, um, the 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 M lock um, handrail cover that we already have. Mm-hmm. And also, um, you know, you see everything is serrated. Why, why, you know, the, 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 the serration gang would say, well, how come we didn't make it serrated? <laughs> well, it's, because, you know, it's because I have used serrated and it's not as versatile, right? Because if you hold a gun this way, well, which, which way do you want the serration to go? Right. So with nice armaments, their, their ribs are vertical, right? So it's good for mitigating, uh, um, um, motion along the board, but what if I want to mitigate um, vertical motion? Well, then well, I'm, I'm going to have like cross disc serrations. So what Tangle Down has done, not a great company, and mm-hmm. they, we, we do a lot of collaborations on plates, uh, mm-hmm. on optics plates. Well, so what they did was something that we did, except they don't call it uh, all angles, but essentially that's what it is. Uh, kind of like what you have on pistol grip, right? It doesn't care about the, the direction of every movement. It it provides equal traction to everything. Okay, so um, so 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 dimple is just simply our way of doing the same thing that the, you know the green minds at my pool, mm-hmm. reptilia and tango down had done in that they're not directional, in that it, it doesn't care. If you want to mitigate um, movements along the board, it does that. If you want to mitigate movement diagonally, it does that too. It just doesn't care. It provides equal traction to from all directions. Okay. So, um, so, so, yeah. So, and um, and um, 
in the beginning, yeah. So, so, so that's what the, what, you know, TFE is a great company. And so in the beginning, it was a very, very specific product. We wanted to manage cables and that was it, right? And so, mm-hmm. and so we figured, well, it's aluminum. Aluminum is very good heat conductor. Uh, we're going to be worried about it. Um, but at some time, so um, there's a lot of cuts on the bottom. And on top, because there's a lot of cables, it's got a huge amount of service area. Mm-hmm. So our friends at Apple and PD actually um, did a test. And the test came out to uh, show that what we suspect was correct. But we didn't want to say that until this test the results showed up. It actually does dissipate heat pretty well okay. to, the point, yeah. to the point that you you can use it as a handguard. Now, this reason the reason why this even came up was because we suspect as well that some people would just buy them because the way they look, right? Because they can use as handguard, even though they, they have no cables to manage. Um, so if you're gonna be if, if it's gonna be um, be push into that role, we like to see how well it works. Because as a cable management panel, you know, we're not so too concerned, concerned about heat. But as a handguard uh, panel, yes, we are concerned about heat at right. this point, right? So, you know, we did a, a little bit former informal um, um, study on it. So, okay, what is the, what's the max number of rounds a police officer expends during a real engagement? Usually that's not very many, okay? Because very rarely do you go like, you know, bang, bang down on, 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 on suspects. Um, okay, fine. That's very, that's not a whole lot of rounds. How m- what is the max number of rounds do you use in training? Mm-hmm. That's also mm-hmm. not a whole lot because you just don't do mic downs. Okay? I mean, just because it's useless. So for both of these scenarios, the PCM works very well as a handguard um, um, or M-lock rail cover. So, um, so anyway, so that, that's, so that's one that's, uh, so, uh, the new products, well, um, I can talk about the, um, the general concept of it. It's, um, it's, it's offset amount. Oh, okay. Now, you know, the offset amount is not new. It's been done, you know, and, and of course, you know, you know us, we are not always the first and don't care about being mm-hmm. first. Being first, it's just that being first, it doesn't mean it's the best or it's right. better. So again, going back to Apple, Apple is rarely the first. Um, some things they are, like the iPhone, iPad, they, they're the first on that, but usually they're not the first. But the their, the but, but their execution and the design is usually the best. Okay, I'm not gonna say ours is gonna be the best. Ours is gonna be different because it works differently for the user, not because we you know, punch holes in the mount. <laughs> Cares, you know, or anodize it in, in purple or in, in blue color. <laughs> doesn't do anything better. Um, we want it to work better so that's it's, so that's the user. So it feels natural to the user. So all, you know, most all of the offset mounts they, they are pretty much the same, right? They are forty five degree, five degree. Mm-hmm. Color, you know, you, so ours is going to be slightly different, but we had to vet it, um, and so, um, and so, um, we so far it seems promising. But we don't know that until we actually have a prototype that we can test. So that was developed from, <clears throat> from a long abandoned concept of backup sites, which mm-hmm. we never went, we would never, because it was too complicated. Um, so, you know, you have a backup site that, you know, it doesn't do anything better than a red dot site. So why not just go to red dot site? So, so it's a case of just because you can, should you, right? So we could spend, th- you can spend $300. Uh, $400 on the back of our sites, or you could spend a little bit more and get something that works actually much better. So mm-hmm. why would you want to go through a mechanical backup site? Well, I mean, that's their reasons for it because, uh, because our sites don't need batteries, right? But uh, but with the uh, with modern radar sites, that is almost not a concern anymore. Right. Because they are so robust that the batteries last forever. They can, they can withstand the abuse. So, so there is that. Um, so, you know, so new technology has rendered some of the old school, um, um, you know, thoughts kind of obsolete. And also the fact that a lot of most people don't, don't use backup sites. Right. <laughs> I mean, frankly, we, we have uh, customers walk in with, with uh, red dots or, or scopes with backup iron sites. And, you know, my question is, have you ever zeroed your sites? And it's like, no, they're just there just in case. Oh, no, 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 you're absolutely right. Well, because, you know, when we take, uh, when we take courses, I think there was only once when people, when, when the instructors say, take off your sites, use your iron. And nobody has zeroed it. 
I mean, maybe <laughs> one or two, right? So we were like, oh, shit, never used that. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, um, it's, you know, for, for the most part, I think there's some reason that um, for, for troops, um, at least, in, you don't see them a lot. Right. Right. Um, just because like they never needed it. Trust me, if, if troops needed it, it would be it would be there. Um, so so it, it just that's the observation. And um, you know nowadays, uh, if people just buy things because oh, it's kind of fun to to dress things up, to have it. And, and the, the, the I thought is well, it's better to have not need than to need and not have, right? Mm-hmm. But on the back of the side, uh, it's not really controversial. I think pretty much everybody can agree that right. most people never use it, and never have used it when they're deployed right it's something short of a department or um agency or even i guess your individual units sops they might have them on there but short of that they're they're not preferred yeah right Right. we should qualify that but by saying for rifle for long gun correct for for pistols yeah i I don't know of agency that does not require that that doesn't mandate bag of sight for the red dot no, absolutely. So I, I do have a, a friend of mine and you know, I didn't realize this until after uh, publishing the video or recording it. Well, uh, it, in my CMMG AR9 uh, video where we're comparing uh, traditional blowback versus the radio delay blowback system, was what's interesting is that his AR9 build was, had a red dot on it, but also offset irons. And when I saw that uh, after reviewing the footage, I questioned it. I completely question it. And, and frankly, I, um, I, I messaged my friend. I was like, why did you do this? It doesn't make any sense. Why do you have offset irons with a, a red dot? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. But anyways, that's, that's one of those uh, learning moments for him. But, you know, he still doesn't hear the end of it until, until now, actually. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah. So another thing that we're developing um, is that we, we um, as you know, that we are now pretty heavily well, uh, it may not be a bit, may not be a good term. We are m- more involved with pistols than we are mm-hmm. well than before. Up until uh, March of 2020, we weren't even in that space at all. Um, but our um, OPL, our um, optics plate for the Glock Moss, has done very well, and uh, that kind of brought us to the map where people haven't heard us before, and now they have. Yeah, I did see that uh, Aaron Cowan at Sage Dynamics did a review on it too. Uh, really, really good review. Well, so, you know, it's yeah, it's uh, well, it works. It's uh, again, you know, he he mentioned this as well, and I, I really he is a super astute guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, he I never talked to him by the way, so I did, I didn't say hey, Aaron, I want you to talk about X Y Z. Um, if I get a chance, I can, I get, I think I would like to, but we would never talk. So he brought up points out that uh, that well, oh, that's really cool that he brought it up because he he said the place was simple, but it doesn't mean they didn't pay attention to it, mm-hmm. which is absolutely true because. Um, because you know the reason why our place has never failed, not once. Um, we haven't been in 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 the market in use by law enforcement, federal agencies, and by troops. Um, it has to do with the way that it's, it's held on the plate, um, and um, and and that is a simple solution for a simple problem. Now. A, a convoluted solution would be to strengthen the screws, to make the screws longer, to get, give them more threat engagements. All of these things are ancillary, in fact, completely immaterial because the, the problem is, is the, if the side moves on the plate, nothing else really matters. Right. Okay. Keep it immobile, it solves everything else. Okay. So we don't make a secret of it and because we tell people this is how we do it. Um, that's why you know we use the same screws, uh, same thread pitch, thin, same threading, same thickness place, thin, same thread engagements uh, as clock. Theirs fails, ours don't. So how can you say it's, it's a screw's fault? Because it's not, mm-hmm. right? But yeah, but so we are more um, vested in the um, in the optics uh, pistol mounting uh, optics mounting plate for for pistols, and we use the same things that we that have done very well for us. Identify the needs, um, ha- in the, um, the design goals, and go about achieving them. And it's very easy. It's very easy. Um, I suppose, yeah, and because you know it, it, the, the the screws shearing and loosening, and that that's not new. But uh, it's kind of amazing to me that there's a lot of solutions that are not solutions, but they address just the symptoms, which of mm-hmm. course don't really do anything about this, the the cost of it, so it continues to fail. Right. But um, yeah, so we're we're starting to uh, to diversify 
Um, I mean, we will continue to, to work on AR-15 and M16 just because, you know, it's, it's increasingly difficult. You know, it was difficult in 2015 to come up with new things, mm-hmm. but we don't care about new things. We just want to do things better. Um, so, but so we're getting more into um, dedicated armor tool, armor tools. But we don't want one big tool that, that does everything because I have one of those. And I consistently use one or two things out of it. So, you know, it's not so much the cost, but you have this big hunk of thing that you have. You only want to use two functions or one function of it all the time. We're not just made this into a single function. And so, of course, is what we have done. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so we, we and uh, the, the red dots is pretty much, a, some people say, oh, it's not a future, it's the present. And, and I think a lot more um, law enforcement agencies are, adopting mm-hmm. it or looking into it if not if they haven't adopted it yet they're looking into it no absolutely so so uh one of the testimonies i have is uh, my guys use uh, my guys at the shop they, they have your optic plates on on their mos platforms and one particular uh a friend of mine too he's uh active duty and he had your plate on his 19 i believe while he would uh, they were search serving a search warrant on a, a felony mm-hmm. search warrant and Frankly, he said that he's uh, trusted it completely and wholeheartedly from his use. And fr- <laughs> frankly, uh, once I gave him the, the the intel on the the OEM MOS plates failing and the the, the screws shearing off, that once and then I recommended the four control system. He did his own independent research and came to the conclusion that that really is the best that's on the market right now. Um, so, like to, to that too, it, it's just the the RMR that you offer right now, or do you offer other designs too? Well, for Glock, we, we have the place for RMR, RMR CC, uh-huh. Agro, and uh, and uh, Lupo's uh, the, uh, Delta Point Pro. Oh, interesting. Uh, okay. Yeah. So um, the uh, the forty three X, the G forty three X slash forty eight place just got approved. We're in, okay. in production now, but the, the, the problem is that um, you know the, the, the slide is cut for the uh, shield RMSC. Right. So it's shorter. So we have to get a plate that elevates the the RMR CC to above to to be flush with the top of the slide, which then negates how, how you know, there's like one maker maybe um, that makes suppressor size 40, 43 X. And so we are, we are having to do our own, our own iron sides. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Is, is that going to be a combo uh, platform or separate? Well, you know, so, you know, uh, unfortunately, because this, unfortunately, there's no standard when it comes to optics mm-hmm. mounting, right? And this is just something that everybody laments. Like, oh, one of the just made things, to, you know. So, <laughs> SIG is like the biggest corporate of it. I like SIG, but my God, their their direction is like all, all over the place. And this is not new, right? You know this. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So, so, yeah, so the SIG wants, you know, uh, for some, some size use of DPP footprint, some of them are some of them don't I'm like uh why they look the same on the bottom why do you make it different right so um so, so in this case the backup sites are, are pretty much made for our place now this doesn't mean it can't be you can't use you can't use for anything else it just um because of, of the elevated position of the armor cc on the 43x um the, it will have to be something like 0.4 or 0.5 tall which kind of contradicts the whole concealed carry aspect of it mm-hmm. So, but the policy being what they are, we don't write policies. I, I, I can recommend that, that these policies be rewritten because when you have a silent, so it's it's a uh, it's kind of like this, this mission creep, right? So you have a concealed carry pistol. When you add the red dot on it, it's not so concealable anymore, mm-hmm. right? But on top of that, no agencies are going to allow this with a backup size. Oh, great! Now so you have this, <laughs> a red dot side, and you have a 0. 0.4 inch. Of of a backup sides in front and in the back. In the back's not so much because the the, the sides are already there. But mm-hmm. the front you got you got about like almost half an inch of, of front side sticking out. Right, so right. What else is there? Oh, pistol. Uh, no, the pistol lights. Uh, excuse me. Is this a concealed carry or is this your 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 primary? Because you have you you, you can't. I mean, we start blurring in, in, uh, and and combine this into one. It, it then doesn't do anything all that well. You can use it very well as concealed carry clean right without anything on it i mean the 43x is tiny it's just about this big mm-hmm. but the moment you put everything else on it it becomes like a duty gun because it's so it's so big but you know policies being what they are I, you know they're not going to rewrite it and uh, in, in 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 the case of backup sites i kind of agree with them um that's um, you, you, sh- you should have one um 
because I mean, you know, for liability reasons as well. Right, right. Um, it's just it doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So, so you, as as an agency, you you can you 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 can authorize the gun, you authorize the sites, but when these two are put together, it's not authorized anymore because it doesn't have it doesn't have iron sights. <laughs> so, an interesting um, thing to, to 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 tackle, but yeah. So, uh, you know, work with uh, with other sites, it just will be pretty tall. Okay. So, so this site will be pretty much made for us, for our application. Good, good. Yeah, I will be uh, inter- very interested in trying that, considering that I just got my 748 MOS also, <laughs> and my plan is to use the, the CC. I mean, if, uh, frankly, I, I, uh, I, I've always been uh, Gen 3, Gen 4 Glocks itself, but I wasn't really interested in trying the 5, but understanding that it is uh, part of my responsibility to product test so I, so I can be able to properly explain things to people that I, I went and picked up three Gen 5. So <laughs> we'll see oh, wow. we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, Gen 5 is great. I mean, they, they, they have made a lot, a lot of improvements. Over right, Gen right. 5. I did notice that when uh, tearing down my uh, initial 43X. On that. It is definitely a different design for sure. For sure. And I do see the improvements behind that. Um, well, that, that's that's pretty much what we have for the, the general uh, interview itself. We're, we're going to go ahead and open up to the general comments or suggestions or any advice that you want to give to people. Now, uh, for, for you folks at home or are not familiar with the Four Controls Pond or the, the community itself, the, uh, Ro- Roger's components have sparked a lot of culture wars between whether or not uh, <laughs> dimples versus serrations, whether beans belong in chili. Uh, there are color wars between the, the OD green versus the gray. And uh, what, what does the FDE team call themselves? I, 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 the, uh, 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 do, do they have a name for themselves? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. They're just kind of uh, their own cave dwellers just hiding in the corner. Oh, well, I, some of the names are, 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 are mentionable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the, the what they call the other team? Um, now it, it's 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 uh, it's it's fun place. Um, you know, it's it's part of it's part of being the um, about it's part of community, right? Mm-hmm. Right, absolutely. It, I am seeing increasing um, number of other manufacturers coming on board too. Like, uh, who do, who do we have recently? Well, I mean, Arson Machine is there. Uh, I know that Law Tacticals in the group, uh, Unity. Uh, is Mod Light in there? He is. Uh, okay. Corey is, is Corey, in Corey, it, yeah. But, yeah, but he, he's busy. He very rarely, um, you know, the, the group is full of a lot of industry folks. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, but they, re- they, they, you know, I'm not sure if he's still in it. Um, but, so, you know, we, you know, not, so, well, well, I, I, so, to mention the name, Pretty much, it's name, it's name dropping. But right. since we're talking about a group, okay, nice armaments, uh, house defense, right? They got work Sonic, my pool, uh, reptilian, and um, and my lights. Um, not sure about show fire, no, not show fire. But no, we have a lot of groups, a lot of folks mm-hmm. in in the com- in, in the um, and, you know, it's it's a very it's 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 a, it's a resource. And um, to me, it's it's um. Uh, it's just part about, about being part of the community. Right, um, right. There's a lot of good intel information sharing um, with the intent to help the overall community. And that, that's what I love about the place here. I mean, I, I don't post much, uh, so much because really there's just so much intel that I'm busy reading. <laughs> and, and of course, some of the, the antics that go around, like uh, the whole egg thing with, with, with your wife, with Kenji. <laughs> and I, I, I pretty much, I laughed pretty hard when I saw that about the, the egg cartons. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And then not to mention too, also, you know, of course, Centurion Arms in there, uh, Corey and Monty and uh, Chad, also Chad from Sotar. Right. Yeah. right? So right. We, we were going to talk about very, very technical information and excellent resource out there. It's, it's definitely the Sotar channel for sure. Um, hey, you know, like-minded folks like to hang out together. Right, um, right, absolutely. If you're a rabbit um, liberal and you voted for Biden, and it probably not going to enjoy yourself, you know. Right. Um, you know, we, uh, I, I do make fun of him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> now, swag section. Um, you know, I, yeah, yeah well, you know, my white part doesn't approve, but, uh, you know, I, yeah, not not a fan of all of, of liberals or Democrats, but but you know, it's it's just just cyclic. What can you do? Right, right. Because the same thing keeps happening, but you know, it's 
people still vote that way. I suppose that people still support them or even, even past the pure hypocrisy that goes on. But, you know, I don't want to get all political here. The, the, I, I don't want to make this uh, interview that way. I mean, this is really about you and the company and your story itself. Mm-hmm. So for, for all those folks that are watching here, that's been uh, very, very captivated by the entire story. Like you, do you have any information or advice for them, uh, for folks who want to get into the industry or, or they want to find their way into the firearms world? I mean, you, your story is quite incredible. You know, you came here and made yourself an American dream for yourself, you know, coming from IT into the firearms world. And of course, the mentioning of uh, some other folks in the industry who left their jobs to come into the firearms world. So the, the misconception that gun owners are not intelligent people is, is insane. Insane. Like we have the probably the highest intellectual personalities that are out there in this industry making the products, right? So, so anyway, so, sorry. Advice for the for the few or for the public from you. Uh, well, if they want to get into the, to the industry, um, it's not hard. Um, but well, I, I should phrase that it's not it's not hard, but it's also not that easy either. Mm-hmm. Because it's easy to just work for somebody. And, and to me, I, I've never been one of them. I, I was going to mention this, you know, when we're talking about my, my background and upbringing. Um, I, I was uh, always at odds with the Chinese or the Asian culture. Um, I'm not a conformist. Um, so you know, my wife made me wear this shirt. <laughs> so I'm like, why? Right. Everyone else does it. You know, I mean, listen, if people are watching it, they know who I am. Okay. Right. I didn't right. be in the face of, hey, you know, I look at us. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I, I just don't like to do things that everyone else does because not that because it's bad, just because, like, well, I, I, I want, I don't need to be like everyone else. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not young. I, I, I the, 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 the part of me wanted to conform and that's long gone. In, in my teens, I wanted to, but now just simply don't care. <laughs> but um, it's, it's that rebellious nature that I never were well for, for bosses. Um, hey, can you do this? Why? I don't, I don't like it. Even though I know more than the boss, but you have to because, well, that's your job. So, yeah, so I worked for myself for a long time because of that. And, um, and uh, I don't take on partners either because I want to have a full control of my direction, of my company's direction, of things we want to do. I don't want to say, oh, um, Jesse, do you like this? Can we go forth, forth with this? No. Nope. If I like it, then that's, that's the end of it. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, you know, this industry, it's, it can be very rewarding, but, uh, you know, if, if you want to get into it, the couple of ways you could do this, one is you could get a job um, working at a gun shop, I mean, you know, uh, or a better uh, w- working with a manufacturer, you will learn uh, their scope of, of the business. Um, but uh, the best thing you can do is by kind of keeping an open mind and so if you like guns, if you, if you, have, if you buy guns, every one of them is, is learning opportunity. Um, you know, I like German guns and mm-hmm. um, I learned from them. You know, as you know, I've started the, uh, the German 80s police trial gun collection with the, uh, <laughs> yeah. with the P9S and, and all that. So what I learned from that is that the, uh, at least back you know, during the days, you know, Germans like to make things super, really complicated. It does marvelous things, but none of which you see anymore just because it, nobody, nothing to cut on. So you can make things complicated, do things that nobody really cares about. Eventually, it just goes away. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or you can make things simple, like their, like the, um, like for instance, their, um, the, um, the, the USP. Mm-hmm. Right? It's very conventional. There's no cocking, levering. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the like, like, like the P7. Mm-hmm. There's no um, c- um, slide release. That's also the decocker. Uh, okay, that's really cool. But what guns have you seen that on? I can name maybe three of them. Okay. So, so that's what I learned. So, so, so if you came over mine, if you have guns, great, learn where you came from. It. Um, if, and um, and if, if you have to, then work for another company and so learn what you can. Um, and so if you have good ideas, well, bring it. You know, it, it, it has a lot to do with the purpose, right? What right. Is, why do you want to be in this business? If you just want to make money, you know what? This is not the most lucrative business there is, right? Be an investment banker. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, you know, you can make a lot of money just investing in stocks if you want to go that route or, or invest in, in real estate. So if you want to make money, you know, right away, I would say that your, your, your purpose is kind of off. Um, you know, this is not to say that if, if you in the business, you, you don't want to make money or you want to make, make money, you're a bad guy. That's not true because you need revenue. A business exists to make a profit. But if your only drive is to make money, there are much better ways to do this. 
and much easier way to do this because it, this is a very competitive field. It's um, as, as, as somebody new, and I've been there twice, um, you know, at Battle Rams in 2009 and at Four Controls in 2015. Um, I, you know, nobody, no one knew about us. It's, it's tough, mm-hmm. it's tough going. But, you know, um, if you have faith in your mission, if you have faith in your products, and profit be damned, um, right? Because you do this for a reason. That is not money. Because otherwise, if that's all there is, in the first year or two, you'll quit because there's no money there. Right. Um, so, you know, we, we stay the course. Um, so our mission has never changed. So even to the point now that we do this for time, it's still the same. It's just profit is a byproduct. It's not the reason. It does not steer us. Um, if, if it did, you'll see us do things that you'll see, like, you know, making parts out of, you know, different colors. They sell. They sell very well. I am not stupid. I don't hate money, but I see what's <laughs> going on here. But I, but still, we have an obligation right. to our users to not do them wrong. I, I, I think that's, you know, as a consumer, you can buy this or not buy it. It's completely your choice. Okay. So I really can't say that if you buy, if you buy, if we make something is red, you buy it. I'm cheating you. No, I'm not saying it kills cancer. <laughs> you are still the ultimate. Um, you know, arbiter. You know, arbiter. You decide what you want to buy, but I think to to cater to to that, and you know, we have done a lot of things that uh, have impacted our bottom line, our revenue, but we did it anyways because that's what's right for the customer. Um, so if you do this as a hobby, at least in, in the beginning, you can afford to be honest. You can afford to do the right things instead of having to worry about your rent, lease, mm-hmm. uh, payroll insurance and whatever else because when you have these things on the top of a part list they drive you they drive your direction i i we don't have that we never have had that um our, our most our mission our purpose have always been the same in that we well do what we do for a reason and that's never about profit right and again i don't hate money i don't hate profit we need it um but it's not a reason so um if you you know you know, this is just my opinion, and um, you, know, you could you could do this and make a pretty good living of it, but it won't be easy going in the first couple of years. And so, if you if you so if if you are the type the type that is to give up, then not only is this job not for you, and nothing really is. <laughs> so, <laughs> right? so uh, but it, you know. It, you know, businesses are usually in the red for the first couple of years, and we and we were in the red for a couple of years, and whatever, don't care. You know, we, we I didn't need this to put the roof over our head, so um, so we can we could afford to do the right thing. We could afford to leverage our um, customer service, customer care on our customers, and to the point that we make no money or lose money in doing so, because ultimately, yeah, we make hard work. But who are we dealing with here? We're dealing with people. We're dealing with customers. That many of them, we, of them we call friends. So without the human components, you can make very good hard work and you won't do very well. But you know, I don't like to be hated. You know, I don't like to be thought of like all oh, that jerk. And there's some companies like that. You know, you like the product, but you don't like the company. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. And I don't want to be like that, you know, because for us, it's all about um, the overall experience. Okay. Now, you know, as my, you know, if if Nick Wonland, at uh, you know, formerly Alto works for us, he would change this a great deal. But in this case, you know, I do. I mean, I, I'm not a hippie, and um, I, and I'm I'm not a progressive, but I do see um, the four controls as a whole is an experience. Okay? Now, you know, if um, to give another example, if you buy a Mac or Apple product you have emotional attachment to it, right? Mm-hmm. People that buy, buy Apple stuff, they're happy. If you buy a PC, it's like buying a hammer. It's just like, oh, whatever, don't care. You need to all get all excited about it, right? So what does Apple do differently than say Dell or IBM or, um, or HP? Well, they make you feel something, right? So I'm not one of the touchy feel people, but I recognize it for what it is. Mm-hmm. So, and even without realizing this, um, four controls, and even a battle rooms when I was there, it has to do with experience about how you feel when you deal with us. 
So, you know, it's, you know, there's actual steps. There are, it's written down, not by me, but it was talked about on Fox Business News one day. I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool, right? Mm-hmm. So, you see that a lot of business now, they, uh, they, they talk about it. Maybe they don't talk about it uh, explicitly, but it's about experience. So, if you go to, go to a store and you, and there's like, um, there's like um, um, childcare or, 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 you know, like um, places for, for kids or like, oh, this is really cool. So, oh, they, they decorate it in such a way that make you feel happy, right? That's the kind of, that's one of them. And the other one is uh, deliver more than you promise and, and, and do right by customers. You care about them and you, you, and you, you can repeat this every single time. So you, you buy stuff from us, you get, ship, you get shipped within two or three minutes. Oh, that's experience because you don't, don't get that from everywhere, right? A lot of people do do that, but not enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you get it, like, oh, okay, uh, now I see why I pay so much for this. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of experience I can we can't convey to you. You have to develop that yourself. But we do our best in packaging it and um, in explaining things to you, so you know what it is you're paying. When you use it, you get another experience. Oh wow! I see why they taught they're there. They are where they are. They're taught right. about such a way, and then you order uh, from us again. You get this. You repeat the same experience over again. And, you know, there's just no secret. You know, some people say we have this cult-like um, following. Um, yeah, okay. I get that. I, I know how to do that, but not, but not on purpose. Right. Uh, but so my advice for, for folks is that, <clears throat> you know, if you, you know, you got to have faith in your mission, in your product. Um, and it, it's, it's, if I could do it, anybody can. Okay. And, and you, know, you hear that a lot. I did this twice <laughs> in 2014. And in, in both cases, it could be frustrating because you're like, oh, I'm going to sit on this product that's really good, but nobody knows about this. How do you get people to know and buy it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, if people don't buy it, they sit on the shelf, but then now you don't have a business to, 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 to speak of. Um, it takes time. It takes knowing friends in the, in the business, um, but that's not everything because some friends I knew wouldn't return my calls or emails after I left Battle Realms. So mm. there's that. Um, um, yeah, so, you know, and also you can do it as a hobby because you're going to lose money. You're going to yeah. be sitting on part of part of you're not going to be able to move. And so you're going to build your reputation slowly unless you happen to be some, be a networking wizard like Nick Boris at uh, at Reptilia. And I freaking guy knows everybody, right? So, <laughs> like, hey, Nick, how, how do you do this? Well, well, I'm not him. You know, he does what he does very, very well. And it's, it's one of my favorite companies because they, they you know, pay attention to each other, get like minded except he is brilliant. I mean, you know, most people we deal with are very, very smart. Um, but, you know, our shared value is that we care about our customers. We care about what we do. Um, if you care about money, then that shows as well. Mm-hmm. Right? If what you do is, is because is, is because you want to pet your, your wallet, that show people that shows people are not stupid, and not for long anyways. Right. So yeah, so it's it, it could be a rewarding business. Um, would I recommend people to get into it? Um, it depends because you know it's it's um, it's has to do with um, um, with attitude, right? not about smart, not about knowledge, I and mean, even though all this come into play. Attitude, right? So, um, for instance, um, I can do what I do very well. But if I want me to draw anything, I can't do that because I don't have that attitude. I'm not wired for it. If you want me to sing, I can't do that either. Not because I'm, de- I'm, I'm defective in a way, just because, well, that's not my thing, right? So it's not for everybody. Just like being a singer is not for everybody. Being mm-hmm. an artist is not for everybody. What well, is this for you? I don't know. You, you know, you, you know, if, if you, it's, it's, you know, uh, I, I, you know, sometimes hobbies are best kept as hobbies. <laughs> don't, don't, don't go any further, right? Because if you li- live, breathe, eat, and drink, everything t- about your life is about guns and firearms. Okay, this could be a, a, a rewarding. Um, but at, at some time, I think that's kind of balanced because, right. <laughs> yeah, right? Because it's, it's something I like, something we do, but I don't, you know, I don't play with it all every time, all, all mm-hmm. day long, because then you do this at the expense of something else. You only right. have so many hours in a day. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know that's a great advice for folks that are looking to get into this world or at least trying to expand their own uh, firearms uh, viewpoints, if you will. Now, for the general folks out there who are watching this, uh, not necessarily into firearms, any uh, 
any one word or one liner type of life advice you have to give to them? <laughs> no, I, I, no, I, I never thought about uh, giving advice to anybody um, about <laughs> that. Because, uh, I mean, in, I mean, I, too, I think to to as, to assume myself giving advice means that I'm in a position to. And you know, I, I've I've had a good life, and um, I've been successful um, in most things I I do. Um, you know, it's you know, I, okay. If I can, if can, it's, it may may not be one thing. It's uh, something we talked about before. Is have faith in what you do, um, believe in yourself, because uh, there will be plenty of self doubts, plenty of others that, that doubt you. Um, it's it's very demoralizing. Mm-hmm. And um, so, but if you believe in yourself, if you believe in your mission, you believe in your purpose, um, all these are the naysayers, eh, whatever, don't care. Okay. To a point, because if you, if you what you're doing is so dumb and too terrible, and, and it calls for uh, an intervention party, well, then that's something else, right? Because so, so right. say you're a druggie, right? People say you shouldn't be doing this. You say, no, no, no I believe in it. No, no, well, obviously that's totally wrong. But, uh, but, you know, that's pretty much everything else you do as well. If you are an artist, then be the best you can. Um, you know, do what you, what you can to make yourself better. Uh, but, but, but it has to do with faith as well, because if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else is going to. Right. Yeah. Believe in yourself. That's sage advice from Roger Wing of Four Controls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, you know, I'm not um, in that position to, to advise anybody, but I'm just saying the things that have worked for me and things I – experienced um that uh, that that if i didn't have it i would have caved in um but uh, it's they all kind of intertwined right because you know i believed in them even though it wasn't making the money it was mm-hmm. kind of I, and this wasn't red um, but if but, but you know it's not dependency of everything because if the if the business model is so flawed if the product is so flawed if the mission is so fl- is so terrible but you keep doing this anyways. So then, well, you need to know when to quit. Now, but there's that as well. Just like, um, you know, a lot of our designs never made it to prototype because well, I called it quits even before that. Um, so do I not believe in myself? Do I not believe in the product? So it's, no, it's about your ability to, to differentiate, mm-hmm. um, you know, what works or what doesn't work and to, and to have enough courage to say, no, this is stupid. I spend enough money on it. That, that's it. Okay. Now, this also came from my experience in IT because you could try the same solution or supposed solution or fix several times. And after that, and after that, if you keep doing it, then you'll fit the definition of an idiot because you to keep doing the same thing and you get different results. So, so you know, uh, you could try to fix three or four times. Okay, time to call it quit because it doesn't work, right? Or you could if you take my advice and then and, and 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 you don't quantify anything else, you can say, well, believe in yourself, believe in what you do. You keep trying it, it never works. So yeah, it's it's a general advice, but it has a lot of quali- qualifiers. Um, uh, but you know, it no, I I I I guess yeah, I don't have a general advice for, for life because well <laughs> I'm not wise enough to, <laughs> to do that. <laughs> Well, I think I think the the general uh, uh, explanation itself was was really good advice, whether you think so or not. Uh, I, I certainly took away from that as well. Uh, th- that's pretty much it, Roger. We're coming on uh, about an hour and forty minutes now. I don't want to take up too much of your time here. Um, so, uh, for you folks at home watching, thank you for tuning in uh, to episode two of Inside the Industry. This is uh, I, I'm Jesse, a bunny operator. That's what. You all know me as for my Instagram, YouTube channels and stuff. And of course, my guest today was uh, Roger Wang of Four Controls, uh, founder from there. And, you know, that. thank you all for tuning in. If you if you like the information here, you like what Roger said, you like his products, go check out the website. Go check out uh, Four Controls, uh, fourcontrolsdesign.com. Was it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, check out the website. Design.com. Uh, we also have a couple of, uh, um, there's, there's also starsforward.com. Okay. Because, I, because for 2015 and a little bit 2016, our logo was uh, two arrows. Right, so, right. Uh, so, um, so starsforward.com, that's ours. And so we also have another one that's, you know, I kind of made it up as a joke. That's the uh, secretduckclub.com. I do recall that. <laughs> yeah. What, what, one of my uh, followers uh posted a picture with that card and my comment was like, I didn't get one of those. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, my, my wife really liked the old logo itself. So, sorry. Yeah, it's but, all right. 
you know, we might go back to making some of them, but uh, it's uh, it's part of history. You know, it's it's about our philosophy of making things simple. But with the uh, with the twin arrow logo, it's I mean, it's simple, but it's just boring. So now I didn't care, but uh, you know, but nowadays people look at it. You know, see, when you like something, when you like somebody, everything that company does, everything that person does, like, oh, this is really cool. But, you know, but, you know, we are at the stage where we can get away with, oh, bring up some of the old stuff and uh, people like it. And I, I take it as, as a responsibility, you know, and, uh, and when we bring up new part of people by them, don't even know what it is yet. Well, that's a responsibility. Uh, I don't take that lightly. I don't, certainly, I certainly don't use it to sell things because, you know, we have even more to, to live up to now. Um, what's before, if we fail or something, eh, again, it's not a big deal. Um, you know, we don't, I don't like it, but now if we fail, we will fail splendidly. And I don't want that because people just have very high expectations of us now. Right, and, and, right. You know, I, I appreciate it. And at some time, it worries me because, you know, it's just a lot to live up to. And, sure, you know, sure. and we, it, we deliver. Um, so, so, you know, um, but yeah, yeah, the, the old logo might come back, make make a comeback on some things every now and then, as a retro line. So I I, I didn't ask about this earlier, but segueing too, what was the inspiration behind the the singus or, or the duck, the the duck symbols? <laughs> well, <laughs> so you know, um, so I was looking. So one of our pod, products um, that we worked on twice, we never made it into even prototype. Uh, we didn't make it into prototype. Um, it's, it's a SCAR um, 1617 ambidextrous okay. charging handle, modular charging handle. Um, and one of the uh, modular pieces actually looks like a bird's wing. And uh, so the idea is that when it comes to, besides, you know, the SCAR has a reciprocating charging handle, right? So when it comes back to hit, to hit you, well, so the idea is that it will, it, will, it will simply move your finger out of the way. Uh-huh. And for it to do that, it's, uh, it's angled like this, right? It's angled uh, like, like, like a wedge, like a triangle. So it, it's, uh, it's, the whole thing is shaped like a wing. So I was looking it up, and then I saw this uh, Cygnus, uh, which actually was on the patch of, a, uh, I think, uh, the YF-12, uh, which is the cousin of, um, of, um, of, um, of the, uh, of the um, that, uh, what is that jet? The, uh, the, the black jet that uh, goes over Mach, Mach 3. Oh, the uh, SR seventy one. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. YF YF twelve, I believe, is what's called, um, was used by CIA exclusively. So mm-hmm. their unit patch is a Cygnus. Oh, um, okay. So I thought this is pretty cool. So I looked it up and I kind of like the idea of something that is completely not a script, right? Because if you look at our logo, I'm like, what is that? It's it's bird. <laughs> it's, <laughs> a, uh, it's, it's it's constellation. The Cygnus is a constellation in the north, one of the brightest uh, constellations in the north. So um, I never want to have names like uh, so and so tactical. I'm mean, nothing wrong with it. I just remember my my rebellious nature. I just don't want to do things that everyone else does. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to do stuff like um, you know such and sort of armament guns and, and nothing wrong with them. I you know because in, being in California, you got to be kind of careful in what you call right. yourself. Right? And so I don't want a um, a logo that looks like we're in gun business. And so that logo was very simple. We spent a total of maybe two or three hours on it, and um, and and so there it is. And um, yeah, it's it's uh, kind of like how the company is. It's simple. It's well, you know, it's elegant. Um, it's and a lot of people like it. And that uh, you know, I that say it's it's a happy coincidence because I didn't make it so people like it. I just liked it. And that was it because it's simple. Um, I don't want a logo that's um, that's too complicated because it's tell, trying to tell a story. There's no story behind it, other than that it kind of looked like a scar trying to handle one of our products we never even made back in 2015. <laughs> um, but people seem to like it. They, you know, yeah. So it's. Uh, <laughs> I, I wish I could take credit uh, uh, how well it's being received, but um, I just happen to, you know, it's it just happened. One of the only things that, that worked out for us. Interesting. Um, I didn't yeah. want to use the shield, and the sh- cross swords, cross guns, or, or, or Greek helmets, overdone. <laughs> nothing wrong with them i just don't want to do things I, that everyone else has already done sure sure yeah yeah that's, that's definitely that yeah so i never knew the history of that uh, of how the logo came to be but uh, you know it's excellent certainly 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 good intel to have um yeah but okay well th- thank you for sharing that with us uh, thank you for coming on board roger so once again roger wang from four controls who unknowing to him started the whole uh duck gang 
uh, <laughs> culture itself uh, from those products. So it's really, uh, so I'm Jesse, I'm Bunny Operator. Thank you all for participating. Uh, you know, that, that's all we got. Again, if you like the content, go to Forward Control's website, follow uh, his social media channels. I'll link the information here. You know, if you go ahead and like, comment, subscribe on this, share the information with anyone who you think it, is, it can help. And as usual, if you find this content useful, take it and everything that we say with a grain of salt and come to your own conclusions with the other research that you find. We're not telling you what to do. We're just giving you information and then you can come to your own conclusions. Uh, so that's all. Uh, thank you all again. And we'll see you next time. Roger, you want to say goodbye? Yep. Thanks, Jesse. All Thanks. right. Bunny, uh, Bunny Operator signing out, guys. Take care. <laughs>